Welcome to another edition of That Time When. I am Matt Miller. This is the podcast series where I take you through the archive of Trek Zone, catching you up on things that you might have missed if you're new to the channel. If you are, ring the notification bell. That'll send you a pop-up whenever I post new content on our YouTube channel. If you're listening to me on a podcast, jump onto Trek Zone and join up on the mailing list. That'll certainly let you know whenever new content is released you can also of course activate notifications on the podcast feed through your favorite app and you'll get a you'll get the episode downloaded and you'll get a notification when things are ready to go on this edition we're flashing back to 2019 and that time we learned about the visual effects of star trek discovery this is trek zones that time when and you can get exclusive behind-the-scenes info and first-play access to all Trekzone podcasts by becoming a member today. Click join on every Trekzone video on YouTube. Go to the trek.zone slash support or scan the QR code on screen throughout the show. Welcome to the show. Today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Discovery's visual effects supervisor. He's on the phone. It's Jason Zimmerman. Uh, welcome to Trekzone, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Now, I was reading online that there were 1,665 effects shots uh, in the 15-episode second season. Obviously, that doesn't all drop on you at once, but how do you and the team tackle something so massive as a, as a sci-fi, as a Star Trek show? Uh, it's sort of like how you eat an elephant, right? It's one bite at a time. <laughs> so you really you, you break it down by episodes, you break it down by script. I mean, you break it even down by scene to sort of get an idea of you know what each sequence requires. Um, and you know you have both the, the shorter view of what what episode is in front of you, like episode one, but then you know you have the overview of what's coming down the pipe and what you know assets and uh, different things you need to start building and creating in order to service you know the episodes coming in the future. So it's really sort of you know just taking a multi pronged approach. I mean, fortunately for me, I have a very very good small team that uh, you know we've been together for a while, and so. We know just how to sort of break things down and make it, you know, palatable one one, one shot at a time. And it's not just those space scenes, is it? They, there's also the planet exteriors, some uh, additional parts to the scene, to to the physical sets as well. Uh, I think there was some, you know, some behind the scenes footage of of Discovery, and a lot of the the shuttle bay and, and those sort of areas are filled out in visual effects as well, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, there's, I mean, there, we, we do have some sets that, uh, you know, are minimal to, to no visual effects, but in some instances, you know, Shuttle Bay is a good example. Uh, we basically have one main wall and a ramp and a floor, and the rest of it is, uh, you know, about 270 degrees of green screen. So, um, yeah, there are, there's, there's different, you know, levels to the amount of set extension, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's windows, there's those sorts of things. So there's always at least something small for us to touch, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't think I'm exaggerating here when I say Such Sweet Sorrow, the two-part season final, brought us the biggest battle sequence since Deep Space Nine's finale. With such complexities, including pure CG shots and the green screen footage, um, especially with Burnham out there in, in, the, in the environmental suit, mm -hmm. how do you approach making all all of those shots uh, marry in together and, and look like one continuous uh, scene? Uh, well, I mean, I think it really boils down to good planning. I mean, fortunately for us, you know, Alex Kurtzman and the, the writing team and Michelle, the showrunner, and the, Tinde, the producing director, um, you know, this is something that we had been talking about for quite some time. Alex had prepared us that this was going to be coming. And so, you know, we started, you know, a few months before sort of planning, okay, what are we, what exactly are we talking about? You know, looking at the calendar to make sure we had enough time and then, you know, just sort of starting to flesh things out. And then when we got the scripts and finally got into putting everything together, we started first versions of pre -vis and storyboards almost right away working concurrently with production so that we would have something to cut in. I mean, the, 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 the challenge when you have so many CG shots is that we, you know, we need to generate, you know, versions for the editors to use, even for the editor's cut, you know, prior, right about the same time we're shooting the footage because there's so many shots that inform what the cut is going to be. So, um, you know, we generated first versions of shots and, and, and in previs, and, you know, in some cases we were pretty close and in some cases they needed to be adjusted once we saw the practical footage. Um, but at least we had something. And so, you know, that was part of it. And then the, it, it, when, we, when we finally got, you know, when we finally shot the footage and got it cut together, um, you know, we sat down with Alex, we sat down with Tunde, and we sort of went through everything painstakingly and said, okay, what, you know, what needs to be adjusted to sort of reflect, uh, you know, what was shot. One, one thing that we did do is we built sort of a, a battlefield diagram very early on 
that you know sort of defined how the Discovery and Enterprise would be surrounded. Uh, you know where the Section Thirty One ships would show up, how they would surround them. You know where the drones would sort of occupy, where the battlefield was. Um, so we kind of had an idea, this you know basic layout of okay, here's where things are, and then we we tried to script. Um, you know, based on that, we tried to sort of identify, you know, the first few scenes where the battle starts and will happen sort of in this area here and then, you know, sort of progressively map out where things would start to happen um, throughout the course of the battle. And that diagram kind of held pretty well for us. Uh, and then, you know, once once we got into the previs, we could just refer back and say, OK, I think this is happening over here. Or this is happening in this part of it. Um, and it sort of served as a, a roadmap for us throughout the process. Uh, you know, fortunately for us, you know, Tunde was very um instrumental in, 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 in sort of helping us, you know, by directing the previs shots and making sure that we, you know, geographically were honoring what we were shooting on the view screens and everything else. So it, it really was about planning as much as humanly possible prior to shooting and then, you know, doing these constant check-ins with uh, producers, with director, just to make sure we're on the right path and everything. And I think, you know, because of that, we were able to, to sort of execute something that, that was pretty cohesive. <laughs>